<laughs> you dumb bastard. It's not a schooner, it's a sailboat. A schooner is a sailboat, stupid head. You know what? There is no Easter Bunny! Over there, that's just a guy in a suit! Where do you get those wonderful toys? All it took was a fat chronic blunt. I'll tell you what you need is a fatty boom batty blunt. And then I guarantee you see a sailboat, an ocean, and maybe even some of the big titty mermaids doing some of that lesbian shit. <laughs> Man, that was romantic, right? <clears throat> Passionate, yeah. No, Brony, that was too little too late. Too little? You said it was a good size. The effort, you retard. The effort was too little too late. But now that you mention it, when a girl says it's a good size, it's a nice way of saying that it's small. Hey! Brenda? Dick. Sure, Shayla found it. Come on, you fuckers think that just because a guy reads comics he can't start some shit? I'll fucking take all you want! I love the smell of commerce in the morning. I never farted in front of Renee, not once, all right? Then last week I let one slip, today she dumps me. <laughs> you think that that's why Renee dumped you? <laughs> Come on, she's not the shallow type bro. She was going <laughs> down on me at the time. Shut up. What? What can I say? I was feeling very relaxed. When I'm relaxed, oh, I squirt. Oh, dude, if, <laughs> if all she did was dump you, you got off light. Kyrgyzstan is not part of the food court. What? Of course it is. The food court is downstairs, the cookie stand is upstairs. It's not like we're talking quantum physics here. The cookie stand counts as an eatery, the eateries are part of the food court. Bullshit. Eateries that operate within the designated square downstairs qualify as food court. Anything outside of said designated square is considered an autonomous unit for mid-mall snack. The force is strong with this one. All right, gentlemen. Free your mind. I'd like to free something. Fuck it. That's what I was thinking. Focus. Whatever. That was the biggest load of crap I've ever heard. I mean, look at you. You're the kind of guy that would beg for sex. I've always taken you with a grain of salt. On your birthday, when you asked me to do a strip tease to the theme from Mighty Mouse, I said okay. When we were at that hotel prom night, and you asked me to sleep underneath the bed in case your mother burst in, I did it. And even when we were at my grandmother's funeral, and you told most of my relatives that you could see your nipples through a burial dress, I let it slide. If you think that I'm going to suffer any more of your shit with a smile now that we're broken up, you're in for some serious fucking disappointment. Brandy dumped you. Wait a second, aren't you two supposed to go to Florida? Yeah. Should've left this morning. Oh, it gets worse. I was going to propose to her. Where? On the Universal tour. You're kidding, what part? When Jaws pops out. That's the most romantic thing I've ever heard. Adventure, excitement, Jedi craves not these things. Come, son of Jarrell, kneel before Zod! Snoochy boochies. <laughs> First you take a run out of the fours, but the sock full of quarters. I'd do it, but I pulled my back out humping your mom last night, Neej. Okay, you clock him on his headpiece and knock his ass out cold. That's when phase two kicks in. I attack the structure, Wolby Berserk style, knock out the fucking pin, and bickety bam, the motherfucker is rubble. Hence, no game shit. Okay, lunchbox, let's try this again. We tidy the roof and you jump off and sell like a spitfire, passing right over the arch nemesis the fours. You then swing up to the stage and knock out the pin. And when that's gone, the stage is trashed and we go smoke a ball. You got it? Now get your fat ass up there. And dude, don't forget your helmet, Snoogan. So, I heard you were going to propose to Brandy Fenning in some theme park. When are men going to learn that women want romance, not Mr. Toad's Wild Ride? Be fair, all right? Everyone wants Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. You called down the thunder, well now you got it. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned for Sega. Breakfast? Breakfast schmreakfast. Look at the score, for God's sake. I'm only in the middle of the second, and I'm winning 12 to 2. Breakfast come and go, Renee. Now Hartford, the whale? Hey, they only beat Vancouver once, maybe twice in a lifetime. Renee seems so coarse anyway. What was it like to date her? Ever slept with somebody? Uh, yeah. No, I mean really slept with somebody, beside them, not just fuck them on a gaming table. 
We, uh, we slept together one time, remember, in high school, that, uh, that ski trip? That was you? Do you remember that costume party? Might that have been the one where you banged Rick Darris on the pool table? <laughs> Nobody remembers shit like that. How is it that you recall the most trivial event? I'll never forget it. How many chances do you get to see Smokey fuck the bandit? Didn't I look just like Burt Reynolds? Except, Except for, for the, the mustache. mustache. Snoochie boochie noochies! Cause all the money, all the women, even all the comic books in the world, they can't substitute for that one person. Tell him, Steve, Dave! But they're engaged. Doesn't matter, it can't happen. Why not? It's bound to come up. It's impossible. Lois could never have Superman's baby. Do you think her fallopian tubes could handle his sperm? I guarantee he blows a load like a shotgun right through her back. What about her womb? Do you think it's strong enough to carry his child? Sure, why not? He's an alien, for Christ's sake. His Kryptonian biological makeup is enhanced by Earth's yellow sun. If Lois gets a tan, the kid could kick right through her stomach. Only someone like Wonder Woman has a strong enough uterus to carry his kid. The only way he could bang regular chicks is with a kryptonite condom. That would kill him. You fucking kidding? The Easter Bunny did this? All I said was the Easter Bunny at the Menlo Park Mall was more convincing. He just jumped the railing and knocked me down. He's fucking dead. I'll let it go. He's under a lot of pressure. What the hell happened to him? The guy in the Easter Bunny suit kicked his ass. I had it coming. Fuck all that shit. Come on, Silent Bob. What really happened? The proprietor of Fashionable Mail beat a rain check into my stomach. Shannon Hamilton? You know that guy? Yeah, I went out with him after we dated. He tried to scream me from a very uncomfortable one. What, like the back of a Volkswagen? Sounds like his M.O. Can you get up? Am I still glowing? Barely breathing. So was Renee involved in any of this? No, this was an independent act of aggression. He told me that his intentions were to penetrate my ex-girlfriend in the most notorious of body cavities. Sounds just like him. Oh, you better tell Renee. I'll let him do whatever the hell he wants. If she's not smart enough to see him for what he is, then she deserves of discomfort. I, on the other hand, have had just about all the discomfort I can stand. One time, my cousin Walter got this cat stuck in his ass. True story. He bought it at our local mall, so the whole fiasco wound up on the news. It was embarrassing for my relatives and all, but the next week, he did it again. Different cat, same results, complete with another trip to the emergency room. So I run into him a week later in the mall, and he's buying another cat. And I says to him, Jesus, Walt, what are you doing? You know you're just gonna get this cat stuck in your ass too, why don't you knock it off? And he said to me, Brody, how the hell else am I supposed to get the gerbil out? My cousin was a weird guy. But my cousin Walter jerked off in public once. True story. He was on a plane to New Mexico when all of a sudden the hydraulics went. The plane started spinning around, going out of control, so he decides it's all over and whips it out and starts beating it right there. So all the other passengers take a cue from him and they start whipping it out and beating like mad. So all the passengers are beating off, plummeting to their certain doom, when all of a sudden, the hydraulics kick back in and the plane rights itself. It lands safely, and everyone puts their pieces or whatever, you know, away and deboard. Nobody mentions the phenomenon to anyone else. Well, did he come or what? Jesus Christ, man, there's just some things you don't talk about in public. Where the hell did that come from? What's going on here?